please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. As India celebrates its 72nd Independence Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has delivered his fifth Independence Day speech from the ramparts of the Red Fort, setting the tone for Battle 2019. In what was his last Independence Day speech ahead of the next year's Lok Sabha election, Prime Minister Modi focused on the economic agenda of the government. The Prime Minister compared his tenure with that of the UPA and said that his government's performance could be judged on the basis of the speed at which the economy has been transformed since 2014. He also said that before 2014, India was seen as a part of uh, the Fragile Five economies. And today, organizations like the IMF are calling the Indian economy the elephant which has started to run. The Prime Minister highlighted his government's effort to tackle black money as well and added that the corrupt and those who have black money will not be forgiven. He also slammed the opposition for not allowing the passage of the anti-triple talaq law, saying that his government was committed to Muslim women, women empowerment and the passage of this law. He had a political message on Kashmir as well, saying that he follows Atal Bihari Vajpayee's path of Kashmiriyat, Insaniyat and Jamuriyat. And he also believes in the fact that Kashmir problem cannot be solved by golis or galis, but gale lagake, by gale lagake. That was the Prime Minister's big political message on Kashmir. Let's uh, get in our panel right now to discuss the Prime Minister's political message. We have Gopal Krishna Agarwal of the BJP. We have Rajya Sabha MP and member of the Congress Party, Pratap Singh Bajwa. We have senior journalist Sharat Pradhan joining us. And P. Chengal Reddy, chief advisor of the Consortium of Indian Farmers Association. Pratap Singh Bajwa, if I can come straight to you first. The Prime Minister used uh, the platform of the Red Fort. He had this opportunity before 2019 and he made it clear that the pace of reforms today is much better than what it was in 2013. In fact, if they had followed the same pace of reforms, then simple things like building toilets and electrification would have decades and even hundreds of years. How do you respond to that? See, one thing I want to say that, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate all Indians on this very auspicious day, Independence Day of India. So I will not, uh, being in the opposition, I will not like to criticize the Prime Minister because the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister of the whole nation. He is even our Prime Minister and we hold him in very high regard. But one thing is there, he is a great mesmerizer. This is, uh, I would like to say that at one given moment, even Hitler mesmerized Germany. Even Mussolini mesmerized Italy and just see what is the condition or what was the condition of those two nations. He also on, uh, on the Red Fort every single year he has been promising something, delivering nothing. Every second year he comes up with a new program and forgets about the rest. I just wanted to ask the Honorable Prime Minister today, what is the state of the economy? Rupee has hit more than 70 rupees per dollar. And uh, uh, your uh, Sensec is falling, your Nifty is falling, your uh, uh, manufacturing is going down, your uh, ex uh, exports are coming mm. down, your imports are increasing, and you are saying that uh, uh, India is progressing? I think so. We are going... See, one thing I want to uh, tell you. In an independent nation, there are different parameters. One of the most okay. important parameters, along with yeah. the economy, is the defense, defense preparedness. Mm. It's the foreign policy of the nation. Where is mm. India today? We are completely isolated mm. on the foreign policy, on defense preparedness. Uh, 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 mm. Parliament committee headed by Murli Manor Joshi ji, one of the veterans of the BJP, has just come okay. up with an appalling report where they say India does not have ammunition of more than 10, yeah. 10 days to fight against China or okay. Pakistan. Uh, on that note, we are underprepared in defense. Mr. Bajwa, Foreign I'm going to get in totally the BJP collapsed. on that. Economy is totally collapsed and Okay. And this grace and this great mess of All right, Mr. Bajwa, I'll request you to hold on. I have to get another panelist now. Yeah. Gopal Krishna Agarwal, you've got Pratap Singh Bajwa of the Congress saying that even Hitler can uh, mesmerize. So the Prime Minister has not done any great deal when he's talking about these achievements. He said, what about our def defense preparedness? And there are also challenges in the form of economic challenges. Look at the rupee hitting the 70 to, do to a dollar mark for uh, the first time. $18 billion trade deficit. 
These are big economic challenges, and the Congress is saying none of this has been addressed in the Prime Minister's speech. I, I would uh, first of all uh, give my good wishes to the uh, people of the country on this 72nd Independence Day. Second thing I would like to mention is just an ISA, anybody who mesmerizes doesn't uh, have an analogy of uh, Hitler or Mussolini. It is quite different. Uh, this analogy doesn't stand uh, the, uh, the, at every place or anything. The third thing is that the country of 125 crore people will definitely have several problems. But ultimately, uh, what, what you have done over the period, what you were in power, how much road you have covered, that is important. That what Prime Minister has uh, was uh, conveying in this message. The way what happened in the country was mm. the indecisiveness of the indecisiveness of the leadership was harming everything. The pay, slow pace of implementation implementation mm. was harming the uh, p people of the country. So these two important issues, mm. along with the large-scale corruption and leakages in the government system, much in the, mm. was the cause of the problem, and that has been addressed in these four years. That is very clear. Now we have a very healthy economy. Definitely falling rupee and uh, mm. trade deficit is a concern. But macroeconomic parameters have to be looked mm. into, not isolation. It has to be taken in the complete, uh, mm. complete picture. You have uh, inflation under control. Control, you have good mm. foreign exchange reserves, you have high mm. GDP growth rate, your fiscal deficit is under control, but your Gopal, current account Gopal deficit, Krishna Agarwal, we also have is, uh, INPAs, below what we also have INPAs, so I, I you agree, have there are problems. Like Nirav Modi, Mehul Choksi, Vijay Malia, yes. they're on the run, so, they're all in different yes. parts of the world, we're yet to be able to catch them. I, I'm going to get in Sharad Pradhan also on the big message over here. Sharad so Pradhan, you heard the Prime Minister address for about no, just, just ten seconds more. It was, These it was are not his longest speech. These are issues you raised. But, but, but Sharad Pradhan, yeah, I'm going to come back to you, Gopal Agarwal. But Sharad Pradhan, what do you think was the Prime Minister's big message over here? He hit out at the Congress. He hit out at the opposition. He spoke about women empowerment. What do you think was the Prime Minister's think... strategy as he spoke from the Red Fort today? Well, you know, the, the main message is about com the comparison that he drew between the previous governments and his four and a half year stint as prime minister. And very skillfully he did that, you know, thanks to his mm -hmm. oratory skills, which, which undoubtedly uh, is mesmerizing for, for whatever reason. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the way he compared, the, he sought to draw a comparison between what had now the, the benchmark mm. is 2013. Very skillfully, this is the first time he is doing this. Mm. And he is talking about what mm. he has been able to achieve and deliver between 2014 and now. Mm. And I think that is going to be the focus mm. of uh, the 2019 uh, campaign, well, election campaign. Because, because mm. he would try and mm. make it, it easier to impress upon people that look here, whatever was done until 2013, mm. That was the, a very, at a very slow pace, mm. and we have delivered this. You know, in the bargain, okay. he will be able to All right. cover up things like Nirav Modi and Choksi and a lot of failures which have actually happened. And mm. the many issues which he has mm. not addressed, which is unemployment. Un unemployment, he, he mm. has been talking about very vaguely in the in recent speeches. There was, he was in Lucknow okay. some time back over to uh, address a summit, uh -huh. investor summit. And he talked about... Yeah. Uh, providing two crore empl employment to people in India by simple statistics that he was, was mm. citing that so many CAs have passed out in this in these mm. years, two years. So therefore, so many people have got employed. Okay. You take you know, it for, but I know what Gopal Agarwal would say so to that. BGP spokesperson have been saying the prime minister never spoke about two crore jobs, but we have reliable data that jobs have increased. This is what the BGP has been saying. Even though Donita Niti Aayog is saying that we are yet to come up with credible data and a mechanism for that, but uh, uh, let, let's get in a representative from uh, from the farmers sector right now. We also have with us Mr. Chengal Reddy, Chief Advisor of the CIFA. Mr. Chengal Reddy, were you satisfied with the kind of assurances that came from the Red Fort today? The Prime Minister said that we've raised MSP. This was a demand uh, that had been there for the past several years. We are committed to doubling farmer incomes. Do you think he gives hopes to farmers across the country, Chengal Reddy? My message to my farmers' friends is 
Uh, we got independence, but we have not achieved uh, freedom. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, regarding this, uh, is the uh, ma ba major problems that are confronted since 2004 are basically one that of how do we overcome of this debt trap every farmer in India has. And the second issue is how do we resolve the issue of uh, increasing the production or productivity? And thirdly, how to make agriculture mm -hmm. sustainable? Of course, the last one is, this is the rain dependent, you see, mostly rain fed farming. You see, in, in 2014, what Mr. Modi said, and then BJP manifesto said, and what M Mr. Modi announced today, well, it is a series of slogans. Mm. Uh, I would like to uh, inform mm. the Mr. Modi and BJP government, the Modi and BJP government, that you have not paid any attention to farm sector at all. I, must, I will ask Mr. Bodhi two, three basic things. Mm. What is the investment you have increased in farm sector in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure like irrigation and all that, or mechanization? And then what are the steps you have taken mm. to bring in more technologies from either Israel, Japan, or America, or Timbuktu? And then lastly, what is that you are able mm. to, what is the so-called MSP which you announced in July? Please remember in May 2015, mm. your government filed an affidavit in Supreme Court saying that MSP will distort the price. And suddenly after three years before elections, mm. you say you have given an MSP. Actually, this MSP of 1750 mm. to rice or wheat, it is not, that is the mm. production cost. Mm. Production cost in all the states, okay. in the important states of Punjab, Haryana, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka. So this is very, very disappointing. In fact, I have not expected anything from Mr. Modi because being an election year, he goes on making more promises, okay. more slogans. Other than that, we have no expectations from Mr. Modi. Uh, I mean, to Mr. Be honest, Mr. Chengar Reddy, there is a farmer's agitation on the way as well. Farmers have been saying that if you talk about this MSP announcement, this is not even what the Prime Minister himself had promised. In fact, Malik Arjun Karge, different members of the Congress party have been saying this in Parliament as well. We'll address all those issues, but there's a very important issue uh, on Kashmir, where he said that we will follow Atal Bihari Vajpayee's path, we will embrace the people of Jammu and Kashmir. What about that political message? How will that go down in the days to come? He also recalled the surgical strike as well. We'll discuss all of that after the break. Don't go anywhere.